Institute. Since that time, 106 women from 27 different collegiate institutions have graduated from Maine New Leadership, a six-day intensive residential summer experience. We're a partner in a national new leadership network that was begun by the Center for American Women and Politics at Rutgers University. Maine New Leadership faculty, who are elected officials and business and community leaders from around the state, build our students' skills, networks, and confidence so they can become engaged community leaders. All students who are selected through a competitive process are given a full scholarship thanks to the generosity of many donors. In this short video, four of our graduates will share their experiences with you about how their skills and experience and confidence have been broadened through Maine New Leadership. What I liked was that educational component of it where I actually got to learn about politics and how it works and how you run for office. And I really appreciated seeing um, faces that were, you know, seeing faces of people that were different from than, than who I was. It's very interesting because they said in the new leadership program, women have to be asked. They don't just do it. They have to be asked to run. I was very shy. And what I ultimately found out was that the main new leadership helped me to come out of my shell. I always said, someday I'll run for selectmen in my town. And um, that someday was just rather daunting because I felt like I had no experience in politics or parliamentary procedure or anything like that. And so when my advisor suggested I apply, I was like, wow, you know, finally a chance for an inside look and, and see if it really is something that I can do or even want to do. It held a lot of weight seeing a woman who had graduated from the University of Maine and then went on to decide she wanted to run for office. So there seems to be a theme here that has been touched on, I'm sure, in many other trainings, that often women need to be encouraged more or reassured more that yes, in fact, you can take a leadership position. I'd like to hear what you have to say and you can ask your panelists some questions. What for you has been the best part of being involved politically? What thing I'm sure you guys all had to deal with, extenuous amount of time for these things. Is that ever beyond discouraging? Is Are there any advantages that you've seen to being female? But, um, you're going to get some defeats and some challenges, but you don't try not to get discouraged, or if you do, go and cry by yourself and then get your strength back and push it again. It's, for me, it's been that. My own internal challenge to myself to keep, keep going, keep it up. You can do it. Even if I wasn't cognitive about the fact that nobody I'd ever seen in a leader's leadership position looked like I look, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important that we all do get involved. All the people that I've met, all the presidents I've met, all the heads of state that I've met, but most of all, all the people of Maine that I've met. I definitely say my self-confidence got knocked up when I went to new leadership and met all these women who were essentially on the same playing field as me and we just got a little nudge. I'd been asked. Learning how to be a better public speaker has helped me to learn my voice um, and realize that I can speak for those people that don't have a voice. What was that moment when you felt most like a leader and when you felt like you really made a difference? I really encourage people not to do public speaking like someone else does, but to do it based on your strengths, because that's what's authentic. We had people who had positions of high power, and they met us introduced individuals before each guest speaker. We had to make sure that we were prepared to speak to these people and take it seriously. Please join me in a warm welcome for Kay Rand. If you really want change, if you really want to help people who need help, then you've got to find a voice. I think what stood out for me with Margaret Chase Smith is that she was sort of a no-nonsense woman who didn't take no for an answer. This for many of you in many of our last three years new leaders has been the exciting day of new leadership. I find it really fascinating that we are not teaching our children 
about Margaret Chase Smith. I have lived here all my life, and I never knew that she even lived in Skowhegan, Maine. She was very conscious that she was becoming a role model for young women. Um, and here in this state, we actually have two female United States Senators. Uh, Olympia Snow, who grew up down in Auburn, Maine, and down below, Senator Susan Collins, who grew up in Caribou, Maine. Um, they both grew up admiring Margaret Chase Smith. But it wasn't just girls growing up in Maine, it was girls growing up in Illinois, like Hillary Rodham. And we know that because when the Clintons went to the White House in 1993, Parade Magazine asked Hillary to write about who the role models in her life had been, and one of the people that she singled out was Margaret Chase Smith. What a force to be reckoned with at a time when women didn't really have that much of a voice, but just what an impact not only did she have on Maine, but the world.